Hello. Today we're going to explore one of the most fascinating paradoxes in biology, cannabis, specifically THC and CBD and how they interact with our health and cardiovascular system. By the end of this talk, you'll understand how these two compounds operate on completely different sides of your nervous system and cardiovascular system and why the experience of relaxation doesn't always mean your physiology is relaxed. Your body actually has its own endocannabinoids. They are part of a vast network called the endocannabinoid system, ECS for short. Think of the ECS as the internal volume knobs that help regulate balance, what scientists call homeostasis. It's involved in everything from mood and pain to appetite, blood pressure, and immune function. This system has three main parts. First, there are the endogenous endocannabinoids, which are natural molecules like anandamide and 2 arachidinoglycerol I don't even know if that's how you say it. But your body produces both of those on demand. Second, there are the enzymes such as FAAH and MAGL that make and break those molecules down when they're no longer needed. And then third, there are the receptors. CB1 and CB2 that sit on the cell membranes and translate those signals into action. Now here's where it gets interesting for our topic today. The CB1 receptor is found abundantly in the brain, but also in other peripheral tissues like the heart, smooth muscle cells of the blood vessels, fat cells, liver, and even the gut. And then there's CB2, which is mostly found on immune cells and in the endothelium that the lining your blood vessels that regulates inflammation and vascular tone. When you activate CB1, you tend to change your mood and perception, alter autonomic function and influence metabolism. When you activate CB2, you usually reduce inflammation, protect tissue and help healing processes. So you can already imagine that stimulating one receptor might feel very different from stimulating the other. Enter the two best known compounds from the cannabis plant, THC or Delta-9 tetrocannabinol, that's the main psychoactive molecule, CBD or cannabinol, that's non-intoxicating but biologically active in other important ways. Even though they came from the same plant, their actions are mirror images. THC is the partial agonist at the CB1 receptor. That means it turns on the receptor, but not to full capacity. Still enough activation to cause enough to trigger a whole cascade of brain and body changes. Everything from altered perception to a faster heart rate. CBD behaves differently. It's what scientists call a negative allosteric modulator at CB1, meaning that it doesn't block the receptor outright, but it does change its shape just enough to dampen THC's activity. CBD also mildly affects CB2 receptor, where it supports anti-inflammatory and protective signaling. And it touches many other molecular switches in the body, like PPAR gamma, which affects metabolism, TRPV1, which senses heat and pain, and adenosine and serotonin receptors, which also influence relaxation and anxiety. So when you think of THC, think of activation, pushing the system forward. And when you think of CBD, think of modulation, fine tuning, the system back towards balance. Now here's the paradox that has puzzled clinicians for a while. If THC increases heart rate and blood pressure and activates both of those signs of sympathetic nervous system activation, why do people often describe feeling peaceful, mellow, and calm? The answer lies in the difference between central nervous system and peripheral effects. What happens in the brain versus what happens in the body. Inside the brain, THC binds to CB1 receptors on neurons that release excitatory neurotransmitters like glutamate and acetylcholine. By suppressing those transmitters, THC reduces what you could think of as mental noise. At the same time, it disinhibits dopamine release in the reward centers, like the nucleus accumbens, which produce 
that sense of pleasure and ease. It's as though the volume knob on the outside world is turned down while the internal reward signals are turned up. So in your mind, the world feels softer. Time slows, stress seems distant. You feel calm, but in your body, it's another story. THC also activates CB1 receptors in the peripheral autonomic nerves and even in the heart itself. That activation causes more epinephrine to be released, which stimulates the sympathetic nervous system. The result is a faster heart rate, a stronger heartbeat, and often transient increases in the blood pressure. So you can feel deeply relaxed while your heart is beating faster than it does when you jog around the block. It's the same type of paradox you see with nicotine. People light a cigarette to calm down, but nicotine also raises the heart rate and blood pressure. Your perception of calm comes from the brain, not from your heart. Another piece of the puzzle is the dose. THC's effects follow a pattern scientists call a biphasic curve, meaning small doses and large doses can do completely different things. At low to moderate doses, THC activates CB1 receptors in areas of the brain that reduce anxiety, especially the amygdala and mildly boost dopamine. Now, individual tolerance varies, but subjective calmness from THC can occur about one to five milligrams inhaled or anywhere from two to 10 milligrams oral. And physiologic stimulation begins roughly around the same level. Sympathetic and vascular stress becomes clinically relevant above 10 to 15 milligrams inhaled or 20 to 25 milligrams oral. Now CBD shows cardiovascular neutrality up to 600 milligrams a day with a mild blood pressure lowering an antioxidant effect at higher doses. So at high doses, those same circuits get overstimulated. Instead of reducing anxiety, they amplify it. Instead of feeling calm, you might feel your heart race and your mind spiral and panic sets in. This dose flip explains why one person could take a puff and feel serene and another or even the same person at a higher dose feels overwhelmed and anxious. The same receptor just pushed too far. Now timing adds another layer. When THC enters your bloodstream, especially through inhalation, it acts within seconds to minutes. The first 20 to 30 minutes are dominated by sympathetic stimulation, and that's when the heart rate peaks, blood pressure rises, and the body is physiologically on. Later, as the brain continues to process the signal, CB1 receptors begin to downregulate, and then GABA, the brain's main calming neurotransmitter, becomes more active. That creates a parasympathetic rebound. The heart starts to settle. A person may feel sleepy or heavy. So the relaxation that many people associate with cannabis isn't immediate calm. It's that second phase that follows the initial physiologic stress response. CBD adds yet another twist. When THC and CBD are taken together, as they are in many natural cannabis strains, CBD tempers the THC intensity. Because CBD slightly changes the shape of that CB1 receptor, THC can't activate it as strongly. This blunts some of the sympathetic and anxiety producing effects of THC. In addition, CBD activates serotonin receptors, the same ones targeted by anti-anxiety medication. It even acts on TRPV1 channels, which can influence pain and temperature regulation. The result is that CBD1 helps smooth out the edges of THC. The racing heart and paranoia become less likely. That's why strains or formulations with balanced ratios of THC and CBD tend to feel gentler, steadier, and have more predictable effects than those high THC products. Now let's talk more about what's happening at the cellular level, especially in the cardiovascular system. When THC activates CB1 receptors on the endothelial cells, that's when the inner lining of your blood vessels can reduce activity of an enzyme called ENOS, short for endothelial nitric oxide synthase. That enzyme's job is to make nitric oxide. That's a tiny gas molecule that relaxes the blood vessels and allows them to dilate. So when ENOS is inhibited, nitric oxide levels fall and the vessels can't dilate or relax as easily. This leads to a temporary increase in vascular resistance and a temporary increase in blood pressure. At the same time, THC activates those cells 
triggering MAP kinase signaling pathways. These are molecular cascades that increase oxidative stress and inflammation. So you have more reactive oxygen species generated, which can damage the cell membranes and cell proteins if not balanced by antioxidants. Over time, repeated activation of this pathway may contribute to endothelial dysfunction, one of the earliest steps in atherosclerosis. THC can also make platelets, cells that form clots, more reactive. Combine that with endothelial stress and increased heart rate, and you can see how in the wrong person, THC could potentially act as a trigger for ischemia or even a heart attack. These effects are transient for most healthy individuals, but in someone with the narrowed arteries already or underlying inflammation, that extra physiologic load can tip the balance and cause problems. CBD acts nearly the opposite direction though. It can increase nitric oxide production by stimulating the PI3 kinase and AKT pathways. That helps blood vessels relax and improves the blood flow, reduces oxidative stress by boosting NRF2 antioxidant systems. In experimental models, CBD reduces the expression of inflammatory cytokines, limits leukocyte adhesion to the endothelium, and restores normal vascular function after injury. So if THC pushes the cardiovascular system towards oxidative and inflammatory stress, CBD nudges it back towards homeostasis and protection. So if we were to summarize this, THC increases the heart rate, increases blood pressure, decreases nitric oxide, raises oxidative stress, and promotes a transient pro-inflammatory, pro-thrombotic state, while CBD has a little effect on the heart rate at rest, may lower stress-induced blood pressure, increases nitric oxide, reduces oxidative stress, and exerts an anti-inflammatory effect. One moves you temporarily towards stimulation, the other moves you towards balance. Several large analyses, including the data from the Journal of the American Heart Association and JAK, have shown people who use cannabis daily or frequently have higher odds of a heart attack, stroke, and even heart failure, even after adjusting for smoking and other risk factors. Some cohorts even show increased cardiovascular mortality in heavy lifetime users, particularly among women. Now, not all studies agree. Some analysis find no significant link and causation is hard to prove. But when you line up the physiologic data, sympathetic activation, endothelial dysfunction, platelet stimulation, it paints a biologically plausible picture of risk. In contrast, CBD does not show those associations. So far, clinical data on CBD suggests a neutral or potentially protective cardiovascular profile. In preclinical models, CBD improves recovery of blood flow and mitigates vascular inflammation in diabetes or high fat diet models. We don't have large randomized human trials, but the direction of evidence is promising. If someone already has coronary artery disease, prior heart attack, arrhythmia, or heart failure, THC dominant cannabis, particularly smoked or vaped, adds measurable cardiovascular strain. The heart is forced to beat faster, oxygen delivery can drop, and vascular tone fluctuates unpredictably. For these patients, clinicians generally recommend avoiding THC or using CBD dominant products. Even for healthy users, understanding that feeling relaxed doesn't mean the heart is relaxed, can help guide safer choices. If we place THC and CBD on opposite ends of the scale, THC turns up the volume and sympathetic nervous system. It also adds oxidative stress and inflammation to the vascular environment. CBD acts more like the brake and the stabilizer, climbing the inflammatory signals, improving nitric oxide flow, and keeping oxidative balance in check. THC provides immediate psychological release that feels relaxing but physiologically, it's a short stress burst. CBD provides slow physical calm that doesn't come with that sympathetic price tag. So when someone says cannabis helps them relax, it's more important to ask relaxation of what? The mind or the body? That duality is why THC can both soothe and stress at the same time. Now CBD, on the other hand, tends to bring mental calm and physical calm together. It doesn't create euphoria or intoxication but it steadies the internal environment. Understanding this distinction helps separate the perceived comfort from true physiologic rest.
THC and CBD are not simply good or bad. They're two very different tools that interact with the same biological system, but in opposite ways. THC activates, stimulates, and in small doses can relax the mind while energizing the body. CBD modulates, calms, and may protect tissues from inflammation and oxidative stress. Your experience and your cardiovascular safety depend on the balance between the two. The best way to use that knowledge is not through fear, but through awareness. Understanding how these molecules work gives you control. It allows you to match your intent, whether that's relaxation, pain relief, or curiosity with the physiology that supports it. Because the goal ultimately isn't just to feel calm for an hour, it's to keep your body, and your heart, and balance for a lifetime. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please hit like. If you want to hear some more, hit subscribe. And if you think someone will be interested in learning about this, share the post. And to keep those comments coming. I'll see you next time.